Hello, everybody, and welcome into my latest live broadcast. It's the 15th of February. It's Thursday, 2024. Thank you guys so much for joining me today. And I have a very unique review in store. These are not toys. These are mesh Wi-Fi 6 and 6E routers for access points, depending on how you want to look at it. We're going to dive into that today. And this comes from a company I've never heard of before. I guess they're based in Vietnam. I've been to their website and I don't see any firmware downloads for these. So not even the version they come with, which is a little concerning. So other than that though, uh, Despicable Me is going to be doing a review, a despicable review of these despicable routers. <laughs> I kid, these routers are actually much better than you might think. But first, hello to everybody out there. Thank you so much for joining me today. And our friends over at Acronis who support us with their software, their true, uh, I still want to call it true image. There's cyber, Acronis <laughs> Cyber Protect Home. There it is. And it's backup software and imaging and cloning software. Very reasonably priced. And you have a discount code here if you uh, want to buy it. Check it out for yourself. It has a free trial, and we'll have Begauden from Acronis joining us here in the near future to do some product demonstrations. It won't be the first time, so if this is new to you, please look back in our library for past visits from our friends at Acronis as we walk through the entire process of downloading the trial step by step. You can click right along with this. You don't even have to know or understand anything other than repeating what you see on the screen. Monkey see, monkey do. And you'll end up with a full image backup of your machine. Now, even if you choose not to buy a Cronus, you keep that backup. Put it away somewhere. Because when you're going to need it, I guarantee it's not going to be because, oh, I'm doing an update, I should back up. Oh, I'm going to put this software on my computer, I should back up. No. You should back up because you don't have a backup where the backup you've made is really old and you've made a lot of changes or added a lot of pictures and stuff to your computer that you no longer have a copy of. So backups are perishable. But regardless of that, any backup is better than no backup. And if you follow along in our tutorial video as we download the software, install it, and run a first backup, you will have a backup of your machine. Now, when you, if your trial ends and you decide not to buy it, keep the backup. And the reason I say that is Acronis will restore your backups for free. It, you can download the software again, even after the trial's expired. Let's say, for example, you've downloaded it, you've followed it through, it's not for you, whatever reason, you don't buy it, trial runs out, so you uninstall the Acronis software. I guess you could leave it installed too if you want to, but uh, the point is that you can always re-download and reinstall. The trial is still done. It's not like you start over again on your trial, but you can still restore that backup for free. And then that might make you think twice about just what a value Acronis is once you go through that hard stopping experience. It will always be an unexpected experience. It often happens at the worst time and it, it could be anything. It could be a power spike. It could be a a flood, it could be a fire, your house could be burglarized. You could accidentally click on something that infects your whole machine with ransomware. Your drive could fail. Um, it just goes on and on and on. So you just never know, just like when you get in the car and you drive, who's ever prepared for an accident? When it happens, it's always a surprise. It's always unexpected. In fact, if you were expecting to get into a car accident, you probably would have stayed home. All right. So all the links for um, Acronis and the discount code in the video notes below the video. Also, a shout out to our friends over at Instant House Call. That's the remote software I use. When clients call me and they need help, we're using Instant House Call. I get on. I oftentimes can fix problems without having to get in the car and drive to their location. Many of my clients are on the other side of Phoenix, and Phoenix is a big area. Now, it's not Los Angeles. People in LA may laugh when I complain about how far away it is, but it's easily an hour drive one way to some of my clients. And that's if traffic's good. Like if you get caught up in traffic or road construction, anything that backs the cars up, then 
All that time I'm sitting in the car, I'm not making any money. And because I'm my only employee, as you can imagine, if I have to drive for an hour to do something that takes five minutes and then an hour back, sometimes clients don't understand why they get charged the full hourly rate. And it's no different than a plumber or anybody else that comes to your home to, you know, it's just like uh, what wealthy people would do, right? Is have people come to them. People often don't consider the time in the car. Not only that, the gas, the wear and tear on the car. And it's as though my time isn't worth anything until I arrive. But that's not fair to me because I could simply reduce my service area and say, I'm sorry, I don't service. You're too far away, right? So some people, or, or there's an additional charge. I say, look, because you're this, you're more than say 15 miles out, there's additional charge, just like a taxi for every mile. I guess it's okay when taxis do it. Anyway, I try to make it fair for everybody. And with instant house call, I can just have them easily put the software on their desktop for me to connect to them, regardless if, they've, if I've never connected to them before. It's super easy. And unlike other remote desktop software, it has a lot of tools for PC repair. You don't necessarily have to use those tools. In other words, if you're just a home user looking for an inexpensive remote desktop software, remote, uh, Instant House Call is one of the least expensive um, uh, remote software packages out there. There are some free versions, which might do you just fine for um, other brands, but they don't do what Instant House Call could do, right? So like file transfer, for example, a lot of free remote software doesn't do file transfer, or if it does, it's dog slow, or it may limit the file size. There's always caveats and catches to the free stuff. No support, no guarantee, blah, blah, blah. So anyway, free trial, of course, of Instant House Call. We've had Corey Fruitman on from Instant House Call as uh, other uh, guests we've had here to talk about the products and demonstrate them to show everybody how they work. If you're interested, check it out. Doesn't cost you anything. No credit cards required or none of that nonsense. And you know what? If you feel like you need a longer trial, you just contact uh, Corey. You'll just contact the customer support and say, hey, can I get a few more, a few more days on this? And it's a small company. He's more than happy to accommodate your request if your request is reasonable. How many companies do you deal with that will do that? So you get a real personal touch there. In any event, Links, as always, in the video notes below the video. And decide for yourself. Don't take my word for nothing. You have to experience it before you will know if it's right for you. And not for anybody else. <laughs> Just for you. <laughs> and uh, uh, thanks again. Of course, if you want to save money on your Windows Office keys, VIP CDK deals, and of course, password management. We'll get more into that uh, with RoboForm. And of course, as I previously mentioned, VIP CDK deals, all offering discounts specifically for you guys. All have free trials, all are guaranteed, and all have discounts just for you. And they all have past interviews, uh, except VIP CDK deals. They, uh, they have not been on the show because they're, well, they say that their English isn't very good and, and they're very uncomfortable being on the show. But I will go through and demonstrate the entire process. I just, it's so simple. I don't think that I should really be that condescending to the audience to go, you have to click this. You know, you have to click add to cart. You have to click buy. Like if you don't know that, maybe you should, <laughs> it may not be for you, I guess. But in any event, everything's guaranteed. And we appreciate their support. And of course, all the support of our friends in blue here in the chat. And everybody with those little gold circles you see, those are all members of the channel, helping keep us free from that traditional sponsorship where corporations tell us what to say, they tell us what to review, they tell us when we're allowed to release the video, and we have to submit the video to them for approval before you can see it. Most of your big tech channels out there that have like a million plus subscribers are sort of bought and paid for by these large corporations. And if you pay attention, you'll notice you'll see a lot of the same manufacturers on that particular channel. And that's okay if that's what they wanna do. It's just not what I wanna do. I don't wanna make commercials 
for people. But as a business owner, um, I do assist my customers with issues and I have solutions that I rely on in my business. And I want to share those same solutions with you. I've been waiting on a, a package to arrive. And if you hear my phone dinging, it's because it sounds like uh, the, the cameras have gone off. And this is a very large package. So bear with me just a moment. I need to go get it because I don't want it left outside. And I'm going to come right back. These videos are live and unscripted. And I was really hoping this guy was going to show up any time before one o'clock. And of course, Murphy's Law, unexpected, just like I'm talking about. And oftentimes in the worst possible time, that's when things happen. All right, I'll be right back. Again, I apologize for that, but this package is nearly as tall as me. And if that doesn't advertise to porch pirates, <laughs> I don't know what does. So I just wanted to bring it in. Um, anyway, uh, today we're looking at these minions based routers, and I can't wait to show them to you. First, I want to say thank you to those, uh, once again, our members and our um, our moderators, and of course, anybody that's contributing here. And I don't just mean financially. I mean contributing in the interactive discussions amongst one another and with myself, because this is all about community. This isn't about me uh, telling you what to do. This is me just sharing with you the inner workings of my business, some of the builds I do, the repairs I do, uh, again, the software and tools that I use, in the real world, instead of being a site that's making commercials, I've jokingly said, you know, many of the other review channels out there, if your ad blocker truly worked for the people who complain about YouTube ads, if that actually worked, it wouldn't allow you to watch their videos. Those commercials you're seeing before their video is their video is just a big commercial. I don't know if you realize that. So we try to keep everything real. If I like something, it's because I genuinely like, like it. I'm not being financially incentivized, except by keeping my business up and running. And the way I keep my business up and running is keeping my customers happy. So if tools that I use keep my customers happy and they want to support us here, that's the best of all worlds. Because that also means you get a discount on something that I have vetted out that I really use in my real business not as some enthusiast or hobbyist whose IT qualifications are Fortnite or, <laughs> I don't know, Minecraft. I, I it just, that's fine. They're allowed to do that. And what they're doing isn't wrong. I'm not better than them. I'm different. And I'm just explaining how I'm different. And that might be important to you because if I was a viewer, I'd want to know that it wouldn't be obvious to me. So I just want to present information to you the way I wish somebody would present it to me. Some people are going to get it. Some people aren't. Some people are going to say everything I say negative is true and everything I say positive is paid for. It's the internet is a weird, weird place. But I assure you, if I genuinely like something, I like it. And if I genuinely dislike something, I dislike it. And there's no money involved in that. And if you don't believe it, it's not my problem. All right, so uh, let's see. Let me scroll through here. It looks like I've missed a few contributions. So I want to say thank you to, where are we? Hey, Chris Johnson renews his membership here. Speaking of members, thank you, Chris. He's now a member for 21 months. That's fantastic. Our friend Buster, known as Peter Laycock in the chat room, contributes 10 pounds. 
He says, good evening, Carrie and Marlena and everyone in the chat. All the best from Bonnie, Scotland. The weather? Is it cold and raining? It's in the 40s, right? 40 degrees? We, we're dropping at nighttime here in Phoenix down into the 40s. But in the daytime all this week, we'll be in the 70s. Low to mid 70 degree Fahrenheit weather. Thank you, Buster. Gerardo Quintana Roo with a membership renewal at 21 months also. Thank you, Gerardo. And he says, happy Thursday, Mr. Carey and all. Right on, yeah, happy Thursday to you. Our friend Planet Cryos, who has his own YouTube channel that you should check out if you haven't already, contributes $5 in Super Chat. He said, it would have been funny if you had dressed up like one of those minions for the review. Joking, good to see you, Carrie, in chat. I'm already dressed up like a minion. That's my everyday look. I, oh, I have my Year of the Dragon shirt on for helping to, well, to join in and respect our friends in China. Uh, not everybody in China is your enemy. They're not out to get you. The actions of, as far as I'm concerned, the actions of my government with other governments has nothing to do with me. <laughs> we're all just planets sharing the same time here. We're, we're all just humans, not planets. We're all humans sharing the same period of time here on this planet. I can't see any reason why we should be mean to one another. So um, a shout out to our friends there enjoying their spring festival. And of course, in Louisiana, they think they just had Mardi Gras on Tuesday. Uh, I want to experience that one of these days. One of these days. All right. And uh, we just try to be respectful of all people, all cultures, and uh, all ages and all genders. And just be nice. Just be kind. It's the easiest thing to do. It's its own reward. And uh, Planet Kraus with another $5 contribution says, Chipotle for dinner. Oh, man. Ah. You be careful with that Chipotle. It, it, it can... Yeah. <laughs> I don't eat there, but you, and, you can... If I'm not there, you start without me, I guess is what I'm trying to say. So he says, have a good stream, Carrie. He's going to go eat, I suppose. All right. Thank you, Planet Cryos. All right. So... Router time. We have, make sure I'm on the right view here. We have two different minions. We've got minion Kevin, minion Bob. Minion Bob, minion Kevin. I think I've got those right. And the boxes have a QR code in the back that take you to the instruction manual, which I think was all in Vietnamese. Oh, no, no, I, there was an English version, now when I think about it. It was the website when I went there. A bunch of stuff was in Vietnamese, but it's a Vietnamese website, so, you know, what did you expect? There's Buster again with 10 pounds. He goes, just for you, the temperature in Edinburgh is 49 degrees Fahrenheit, which is 9.4 degrees Celsius. What is it, raining? No, he didn't say it was raining, so I guess it's not raining. Thank you, Buster. Now, what's cool about these, first of all, is they look exactly in real life like you would expect them to. Come on. Here's the idea. The big guy here, this is Wi-Fi 6C. The little guy is Wi-Fi 6. I'm not exactly sure why that is. Wi-Fi? Anyway, um, Kevin here and Bob can be set up as mesh points. So in other words, you can buy several Kevins or several Bobs or a mixture, or maybe make Kevin your main router and then put a bunch of Bobs around the house and mesh them all together for a complete coverage. Uh, they're not Wi-Fi 7. They're also very affordable, surprisingly affordable. And I, I'm really surprised. Um, the only place I've found them is on Amazon. Now, in these boxes, what we're going to have remaining is, well, I'll just show you. Take these things out of here. 
So they're calling these access points or APs. Let me bring this up to the camera a little closer here. So you can get an idea of exactly what's in the box. And we've got a pretty decent manual size here going through. The, uh, obviously this one manual is intended to be for both. And you'll see here that the contents, if I can find this, are English between pages 8 and 14. So really out of this thick manual, only eight, uh, pages 8 to 14 are going to be for us. But they walk you through with pictures and um, it's pretty thorough. I was actually quite impressed at how well this was done from a company I've never heard of before. Now this company has been making routers for some time, sold uh, in and around Asia and maybe Europe, I'm not sure. They've also included this sticker. What's cool about the sticker is this gives you the factory default passwords, which you, you're intended to leave alone, but you can change them if you want to. If you do, then these stickers will do you no good. But the idea here is you could scan your, with your phone the QR codes. One QR code is to connect automatically to Wi-Fi, which is nice to have. And the other is how to log in to the admin page. And you, even the admin password is not that, it's not password or admin. They really have a, a randomly generated password there. So you're definitely gonna want, you wanna know that. And prior to the show, I played with Bob a little bit because he arrived first, but I haven't even turned, turned on Kevin yet. I did not sound right. And then in this bag, we've got our little power supply here. Little wall wart, barrel style connector. This is um, I'm trying to look at what the amperage is on this. It's pretty low. 12 volts, less than one amp. Uh, the output is 12 volts, two amps is what it says. Okay. This thing, I don't think it's going to draw two amps from the wall, but what do I know? And then finally, you even get a Minion-themed <laughs> Ethernet cable, a flat one, so you can run it under carpet or whatever. And that looks like this. Have you ever seen an Ethernet cable that looks like that? Now, I guess the reason they're calling these access points is if we bring one up here, and they're both the same on the back, on his chest, you're going to have a light, and the light's going to be red if there's no connection, and green if everything's good. That's pretty much, I think, the only two you got. His feet kind of move around, and his hair's a little funky there. And then around back, you just have, essentially, when you think of uh, access points, or not access, uh, well, or mesh systems, like uh, the Eero or or others where you've got the little square, like Amazon has theirs, Google has theirs. You usually only get two ports, that's pretty common. And so one is intended, in this case, to be your internet source. And if I can get the camera to focus, bear with me, where it says WAN on the blue port, that's where you plug in your, your internet source. And then LAN, the yellow port, is what you can plug a uh, device into. But you'll see there's only one. You've got a switch here to turn all the LEDs off. You'll say, but Carrie, there's only one LED. You just said it's just the this. Well, no, there's LEDs on the back of the um, network ports, and it turns those off as well. So if this is in a bedroom and, and the light is bothering you, it's, there's not much light that comes out of it, but some people are quite sensitive to that. You just flip the switch, and the unit, of course, still works, but all the lights go out. It's a pretty nice touch. And then we've got our power barrel connector right there. We have how to set this up with mesh. There's a mesh button and of course a recessed reset if you want to factory reset this for some reason. And then on the bottom of the unit is where you would expect to find your SSID and password and the URL to log into the unit to configure it. 
It's really a plug and play solution. You don't have to configure it. That's the beauty of these. They're simplified. Now, if we take a look over here at Bob, very much the same thing. He's got no hair. He's got the same kind of feet. Got the same two ports in the back. Same location for power. Same mesh button, same LED button. And same information on the bottom. Now, they're very reasonably priced, first of all. There's a couple of things that when uh, it was Mara and I were looking at these, I said, those are, those are really cute. I bet they're crap. <laughs> it's sort of like when you buy a cologne or perfume and it's in a fancy bottle or even in many cases, alcohol that's in a fancy bottle. What's in the bottle is often, in my experience, terrible. So you're buying it for the bottle. So I just thought, well, you're buying this, you know, for the theme of, of Minions. But it turns out they're actually pretty good. Yeah, they're not bad. In fact, they, in, statistically speaking, they are probably better than what you're using right now as far as how fast they are, and how, how much coverage you can gain out of them. Because as you can add more mesh points, you can continue to cover any dead spots anywhere in your house from the second floor, third floor, fourth floor, I don't know how big your house is, your basement, all the way from one side to the other side, the backyard, the front yard. Now these are not outdoor, but you could certainly put it right near an outdoor wall, and that should cover whatever outdoor areas within, an, I don't know, thousand feet. Anyway, let me show you the Amazon page here. I don't know how I found these. I think I was just squirreling around and uh, looking for a router to review. And I haven't seen anything new and exciting in the router world for a while. You know, we reviewed the Wi-Fi 7 last year and there's just nothing. Asus has a really nice one, but I don't think they're going to sell it here in the USA. And even if they did, I couldn't afford it. Let's go over to the Amazon page and we'll look at it together. There we go. So on this one page, you're going to have both Bob and Kevin. You'll see Kevin is, uh, let's just click on it here, AXE 5400 Wi-Fi standard. And Bob, a little bit slower, also almost half the price, AXE, I'm sorry, AX1800. So that's all to do with performance. Now, if you are going to put these around the house, for example, you may not need Wi-Fi 6E everywhere. So you could save a lot of money by keeping the Wi-Fi 6E in places where you need that higher bandwidth and then spend you know, nearly half to put the Wi-Fi 6 Bob in places where that performance difference won't really matter. So for example, if you're just connecting to the internet and you're not transferring files inside of the house, you probably won't see much benefit from the Wi-Fi 6E. So why spend the extra money if you don't have to? On the other hand, you don't have to use one to use the other. They're both independent and they both work together. You can use mini Kevins or mini Bobs or mini Kevins and Bobs or Bobs and Kevins as you want. There's probably a limit, but I don't know what it is. It's, uh, I don't know how many of these you can mesh together, but typically it's easily assumed that uh, no less than three and certainly upwards of six or more. Most people wouldn't mesh more than six. Um, it's brand new, came out in 2024. You'll see Kevin here at 129, and Bob is here at uh, 69. And of course, the pictures that they're including are including the dimensions and, uh, of course, they're dual band, 2.4 and 5 gigahertz, both of them. A little bit about the speeds and a little bit about the mesh points. Now here, of course, they show three. 
And then there's a little video here. And the reviews, look at these reviews. We're at four and a half average out of five, out of 29 reviews. Who knew? Who knew? The other thing that's really cool is their interface. When you log in to the admin page, well, let me show you. Let's go back to, let's go back to camera one. I guess to demonstrate these, uh, I'm going to have to set up a mini PC here real quick. So we'll just grab, I'm just going to randomly grab this mini PC that's on top so that I can connect it to one of these routers. I can't do it with the streamer without interrupting the stream. So let's get that plugged in right quick. I got a little mini PC that's really fast, so this won't take very long. I need a keyboard and a mouse. Keyboard and a mouse. I, <laughs> I better move this keyboard or I'm going to be typing on the wrong keyboard all day. Move that out of the way and let's turn these on. Sari wants to know, can you use these with another router? Yes. Yes, you can. And then... This is my USB dongle for the keyboard and mouse, and I need an HDMI cable. Now to hook these up, I can't remember which... This was Kevin, right? Let's, um, yeah, let's do this. I haven't turned, I have not powered on, Kevin. They just arrived, so I haven't had much time to prep. And not only that, I like to keep these videos genuine, authentic, real. Uh, there are certain things that we all assume, and many of us can't be bothered to read the directions. So let's just go through it together. That if we get stuck, we've always got the manual. But it's pretty simple. So let me plug this in here and plug in Kevin because he's new. Like I said, I've already played around with Bob there. And then I'm going to grab this cable, which comes from the, this comes from the TP-Link that I have here in Studio B. So that's another router, okay? That's where the source, anytime you see me use this cable, that's coming from a router. And we're going to plug that in where it says WAN, W-A-N, right there. And then I'm just going to run a cable, or I can connect this wirelessly. But I'm going to run a cable just to simplify this and, and move it along. So we'll just grab a, a regular old Ethernet cable. And we'll go from the LAN port to our mini PC. Again, the mini PC has Wi-Fi. And because we already know the Wi-Fi name and password has been set from the factory, whereas other companies, they force you to do that on your own. And that throws a lot of people. They're like, I don't know, you know, didn't I already set up a password? They're, they're confusing the administration page, which allows you to make changes to the router, with the Wi-Fi page that allows you to connect to the router for accessing the internet and any network share, potentially. Now with that plugged in, I guess I need to turn this guy around. There is no on off switch. Let me turn the LED on though, so we can see the status. We wanna see his chest light up green if everything's good. And it did already. And if you can't see it, let me cut the lights. Can you see that he's green? And can you see on the back, the LEDs for both of those cables? And then when I hit the LED button into the off position, all the LEDs go off. That's it. It's just that minor. I can't believe that there are people, well, I can, that would be annoyed by, by such a small amount of light. But there you go. Let me bring the lights back up. Now, I need to go over to this computer, which is on HDMI 1. And I'm going to turn off camera one so we can see this desktop together. And let's see, I need to go full screen. Okay. Let's 
What's that? So how do we access this guy? Uh, one of the things that I do, um, well, first of all, most normal people would just look at the bottom of the router and see what it says. But here's what I do, because this works universally, is I will type in CMD and then run as administrator. And then I type IP config. And whatever the gateway is, that is how you access your router. This is the gateway that this computer is using to the router it's plugged into, not to the router the router's plugged into. <laughs> this is why plugging a router into a router gets a little confusing, but you would treat this exactly the same. All right. So anything that you wanted to configure, you would use a computer that's plugged into that router to keep your life a lot simpler. So it shows here, we've been automatically assigned this 172. That's a weird address. Well, and then we just go there, right? So 172, what was it? Dot 20 dot, hold on a minute. That was kind of pre-filled and I made an assumption. 172.20.1.1. Connection was interrupted. Hmm. One seven two. Twenty. Okay. Network change was detected. Oh, you know why? If you look down here, right down here, it's connecting. There we go. Let's try that again. 172. So I guess that was in the cache because Bob must have come out of the box the same way, and that makes sense. Look at your login page. How cool is that? Now, on that sheet of uh, paper or that sticker, it has our default password, which is, okay, don't confuse connecting to Wi-Fi with accessing the admin page. Apparently, the username is Kevin. <laughs> it doesn't tell us a username here. It just gives us a password. So I don't know if it cares with the username. Very strange. And the URL they told us to go to is smartair.home.com instead of typing the number in. But the number will change based on your particular network and router configuration, or it's just variable depending on how your stuff is set up. Okay, I think that's what it says it is. By enabling the automatic upgrade service, you will receive the latest firmware. Great, I think that's a good idea. Let's accept that. As I mentioned, there has not been any new firmware or even any old firmware posted on the site, but because this is a brand new product, um, it may be just too soon to expect anything. Hello, we have received your approval regarding the automatic update service, and now you'll be able to experience updated and improved functionality. For all our customers, we are constantly providing upgrades for our products, and if you have any questions or problems, please contact us regarding the issue. And there is, <laughs> have you ever seen, have you ever seen a router configuration page that looks like this? And you're going to get all the traditional information that you would get on any other router. System info, access ports, um, port statistics, connected devices, if you want to see what's connected, device management. MAC address filtering, media access control, which most of you wouldn't mess with. Network stuff, all your internet, uh, IPTV settings, mesh settings. So you can set up the mesh. You can turn it on or turn it off. Give the device a name. You don't want two devices with the same name. So even just changing one little character here is all you need to do for the system to acknowledge a different name. And out of the box, I don't know if that 
if these last few numbers change automatically because this really seems simplified so that all the end user has to do is push the buttons and you don't have to have all this technical now. Then of course there's connection info to verify what is on the mesh and we only have Kevin powered on. We have not powered on Bob nor have I meshed them together. They, they don't mesh together automatically because that's not what you might want the two units to do. So it's up to you to enable that. But at least it's easier to enable than any other mesh network I've ever seen. And of course, if you want to change those Wi-Fi settings from what they have set for you on the stickers, you can do that if you wish to. But then that means you're rendering the information on the stickers useless. But don't get rid of the stickers because the minute you reset the router, and it goes back to default, you won't know that information, but you will be able to go to the website. Well, this supplies, this supports multi-user, multi-in, multi-out. That's cool. Um, we have w, uh, wireless protected service settings, right? And that's to set your password. Oh, I'm sorry, not to set your password. This is, so WPS, I was thinking WPA. WPS enables you to connect like a wireless printer or something by just pushing the WPS button on the printer, if so equipped, and within a few seconds, um, pressing the WPS button on the router. This router doesn't have a WPS button on it, but it does have a WPS button in it, meaning in the firmware, uh, in the router software. Typically, you know, I said that backwards, you typically turn WPS on, on the router first. Not sure what how much of a big deal that makes. I don't use WPS. It's for people who think that entering the password's too complicated, especially on a printer where it's not always um, obvious. And people who aren't of a technical mindset are they're just their eyes glaze over. So if you could say, look, push the button here, then go push the button over there within a certain you know 60, 90 seconds, they'll connect securely. But WPS is not considered a secure platform for that very reason. And a lot of places recommend you turn WPS off. So here, WP WPS by default is off unless you hit the start button. Then we have something called Wi-Fi extension settings. I'm not exactly sure what that means. Let's see, oh, Wi-Fi scanning, encryption key, WPA mode. Uh, we're in bridge mode. Automatically, it determined that we are plugged into another router. It did that all on its own. This is, I'm not going to say it's idiot proof, but it's definitely one of the easiest router setups. It is intended for the end user, just a common non-computer techie person, to plug in and use it as it's configured. The only people that would be getting in here and doing this are people that know what they're doing. A regular end user would not be required as many other routers do. In fact, I think every other router that I've experienced requires the end user to go in and set it up. They've already set it up for you and not to worry, no two units are the same with regards to the Wi-Fi password or the login password. That's all being randomly generated as they're programming the BIOS or the firmware and the stickers are individually printed for each unit as unique as a serial number. And then under device management, you have system management, you have account management. Of course, we can configure our time if that's important. You might have devices that rely on the router's time like security cameras. Web server management is pretty complicated stuff. You've got your logs, right? This is everything we've done since the router's been turned on. We have something called additional settings, which under here has our universal plug and play settings, our DDNS, remote access, which allows outside access into the router, which I would leave disabled. Nobody can break through a door where there is no door. So I'm saying you've got wake on LAN settings here. You also have uh, your typical port forwarding and demilitarized zone settings. And then there's also auto reboot settings. So, you know, sometimes they tell you, you should unplug it and plug it back in. Well, you can have it do that for you so you don't have to think about it. And you can say, I want this to reboot at a specific day uh, or on a specific date and then do it, you know, whatever the date is, do it on the first at four o'clock in the morning and let it just do that once a month while you're sleeping. 
or you know set that time to when you're sleeping and people aren't using it you'll totally forget it's doing it and you'll get just incredible reliability where you're going to say at some point you're going to realize i haven't had to reboot these things like forever at least in theory because they're rebooting themselves because you set that up that is a feature i would love to see on other routers and if other routers have it i'd like to see it more prominent because i haven't noticed it but here everything is so easy to access this is so much better than i thought it was going to be then of course there's firmware management you can see it tells us our current firmware version the automatic upgrade is turned on so if you decide to change your mind you just go in here to switch it and then if you want to prove if you've downloaded the firmware manually you can then select to point to wherever your firmware is and upload it that way but you shouldn't need to do that you should be able to just update on its own and that's all there is like it's just that easy i can't get over it and then you're looking at really good range you're looking at really nice um performance especially out of kevin here bob look if i was say let's say studio b had a basement let me go back to camera one before i continue this discussion let's say studio one had a basement and down in the basement i'm not doing any work i don't have an office but i've got a television down there and all my friends are coming over and we're going to watch the Super Bowl and we're going to stream it wirelessly from, let's say, Paramount Plus. I think that's what the Super Bowl was on. I don't want to run a cable from where the router is. The router could be on the first floor. Or there could be a second floor. And it would be a terrible idea to put the router anywhere but into the middle of any house or building for the best equal fair coverage. But let's just say the guy who ran the cable, the Internet guy, ran the cable up into the bedroom upstairs. And so you have to put your modem there, whether you like it or not. And it's up against the opposite side of the house. And you're down two floors down and also towards the opposite end of the house. You don't necessarily need to have Wi-Fi 6E to watch streaming television. So why spend the extra money? Plus it's also physically larger. Just get yourself a Bob Put him down there, and if the signal's a little weak from that second floor to the basement, then either grab another Kevin or another Bob and put them on the first floor and try and get them as much as possible in the middle of the building. So the middle of the basement, the middle of the first floor, the middle of the second floor, you're going to get the best coverage. On the other hand, if your house is really long, you could put one Bob on one side of the room or one side of the house, and another one at the other side. Anywhere that you've got weak spots, dead spots, backyard, front yard, you can simply add another Bob. The only reason you would need the Kevin is really internal file transfer. So if you're not transferring files, big files, by the way, for it to really make any difference that matters from the basement to the second floor, you don't need to spend all the money to have the bigger, more expensive Kevin. Just get the Bob. You, ignorance is bliss. No one will know the difference. The phone will automatically, let's say you're connected, let's say you're connected to your Wi-Fi with your phone. Because they're mesh, it automatically switches you to the strongest access point as you walk around the house. You don't even know it's, it's happening. Just like when you're talking on the phone, your cell phone is switching towers as you're driving. You're not on one cell tower on a three-hour road trip. You're switching towers repeatedly, often. And you have no notice of that while you're on the phone. It doesn't drop the connection usually. And one tower hands the call off to the next tower. Mesh systems work the same, but their range is very, very much low. It's a much lower power. And it's lower power because they don't want radio signals bombarding you at high free, you know. There's a couple of reasons. One would be health concerns, right? Some people are like, hey. Could the radio waves hurt you? Well, you're getting hit with radio waves whether you like it or not. From literally radio stations, television stations, airplanes, um, police, military. It's all over. And the certain bandwidth that the FCC has permitted for use for residentials is low power so that it doesn't potentially interfere with emergency services or airplanes, etc. And also so that it's not a potential health hazard if you've got this thing sitting right next to your head, I still wouldn't put it next to my head. 
But if you did, in theory, it's so low power, it should make a difference. So they're perfectly safe. And again, the best place to put your router is in the middle of the building. And wherever you have weak or dead spots that aren't acceptable to you, that's where you place another one uh, somewhere between where you're trying to get and where it's coming from. Because the closer you can get your mesh to the next mesh, the stronger the signal is between them. But it won't do you much good if you set them both side by side because you're not going to extend your range except by that much. So you try and meet them in the middle, right, if possible. And then you get a fair connection from one mesh to the other and then from each mesh to whatever you're connecting to. Let's take a look in the chat room because I realize some of this can be quite confusing to people. But man, oh man, have they... I think you've got to agree. That's one of the simplest setups I've ever seen. And when you have guests come over, they're going to think that's a toy. They're not going to realize that's, a, that's your router. Who would think that's a router? I wouldn't. Now, if you're somebody that needs the latest Wi-Fi 7, like me, you can have that too. Like me, I just plug the Wi-Fi 7 router right into it. So my Wi-Fi 7 router has all of those ports on the back of it that I need. But a lot of people aren't me. Isn't that a surprise? And they're just running wireless devices. Everything's wireless. So they don't need the plugs in the back. All right, let's take a look here. Oh, people think they're cute. Douglas Burchell says they wonder how they talk with no mouth. You can't see their mouths? I see their mouths. Uh, let's see. I'm, I'm really going back because I've missed a lot. Mike Visions with a five pound super chat says, hey, Carrie, Mara, and all in chat. Welcome in, Mike. Thanks for the contribution. PC Fishing renews membership. Now a member for 21 months. Right on. Thank you, PC Fishing. Uh, I, here on the channel, I try to cover as much as possible of what I support or would support in my business for both business and consumer clientele. So while I wouldn't necessarily recommend these for a business, I have many residential customers that would absolutely love these. And you know, the goal of the video isn't to tell you what you need, but to just introduce you to what's available. What you think is appropriate or inappropriate is, you know, that's on you. Doman2000 says, probably you can set it as a bridge or access point slash client on the WAN port. It does look that way because it's set to bridge right now, and I didn't look through the options, but obviously there's a drop down there. Claudio says, what cute routers. Mara says she loves it so much. <laughs> They're very cute. Andy Gaines says, what's a 172 IP address? I know what a 169 address is. So 169 means you're not getting an address, right? That's just like zero. Um, 172 and 192 and 10, those are non-routable, meaning you cannot, by me showing you that IP address, it's not a, a security risk for me. You can't route to that from outside of this building. It's, it's what they call non-routable. So your cable modem is going to get a router pull IP address, and then your router acts as a firewall and as a... Um, oh, come on, Kerry, you know the word. It's a um, network address translation device. And what it does is it takes, it takes that public IP address that somebody could used to hack you, to, to hassle you, and it hides it and protects it and gives you a non-routable IP address starting with 192 or starting with 10 or 172. 
When you plug a router into a router, they cannot share the same address, nor can they even share the same first. The problem when you do that is this router cannot be giving out the same IP addresses as my other router. That would be like assigning phone numbers and giving you the same phone number as somebody else in the office, in the same office. So when somebody dials, whose phone's gonna ring, right? So the router recognizes we have the IP address that it's getting from this other router is a non-routable IP address. So it automatically says, okay, we can't use that. We have to change one of the uh, octets. And as far as the first numbers go, 10, 192, or 172 should be what your network starts with on your computer. And that's what your router is doing, is it's doing that network address translation. And that's part of what a firewall is. And that keeps people out. There's no possible way anybody can type, you know, I want to attack, I want to ping 172, or I want to find out, you know, where 10 dot whatever is. Not possible over the internet. It's been that way since TCP IP was created. So at least they thought of that. <laughs> non routable IP addresses are your best friend when it comes to security. Feral Terminator said, I'm getting, I'm getting to the point in my life where I just want to tinker less with networking equipment. I just want it to work. I think a lot of people would, would agree with you. And most people, I think, would agree with that. It's just the hobbyists, the enthusiasts, they like to tinker. And that's fine. There's nothing wrong with it. But it doesn't represent the majority by far. Andy Kane says, it's great that it detects bridge mode. Yeah, just plug it in. They work. Oh, Planet Cryos contributes two bucks. He says, delay in eating. I'm back for a bit. You know what? You might just be extending your life. Are both the LAN and WAN ports 2.5 gigabit? Um, I don't know what speed, though. You know what? That's a good question. Uh, I'm assuming they're one gig each. If they're anything more than that, I will be delightfully surprised. But I don't expect them to be. I just got to find where it's English. Hmm. If it says so in the English part of these directions, I'm not seeing it. And I don't see, hold on a minute. No, it doesn't say any number. There's no number here. It just says LAN or WAN. Again, I would expect them both to be one gigabit, but I could be wrong. I didn't even think of that question because primarily you're not going to use these for file transfer. And at least the fastest internet connection we have available in Phoenix is a gig, so you wouldn't use anything faster than that. I'm not quite sure what, what would you do with it. Oh, I guess on the LAN connection, though. But even on the LAN connection, you're, you're either going directly out to the router or you're going wireless to another mesh point, which would slow you down to the wireless speed. So would there be any benefit to 2.5 gig? think so. That's why I'm thinking to myself, I don't think it would matter, at least until people start getting multi-gig internet connections as a normal thing. And if you got that kind of money, I don't know why you're buying these. You could get yourself a, a, a much nicer router system. But uh, we'll, we'll look into that. Mark Gain says they're definitely a conversation piece.
All right, guys, let's be friendly in the chat, please. El Hedge is a great member here in the channel, and I see some people giving him a hard time when all he was trying to do was offer helpful information. And um, there's no reason. There's no reason for that, guys. It's, it's all good. No, no disrespect was intended. This is what happens. You try and help somebody. You think you're helping, and they get all ticked off and offended that you think they needed the help. There's no reason for that. Please don't do that. You can say thank you or say nothing. But um, I consider El has a friend, even though I've never met him. And I know, and this is why I like when, I, when people are blue, I can understand what the intent is. It's not like somebody comes in I've never seen before. And we don't know. Are they being a jerk? Or are they just being misunderstood? So in this case, guys, please. Um, somebody's trying to help. There's no reason to be offended by that. Now, I do feel a little heat coming out of the back of this bad boy here. And I'm wondering, let's go back. Let's go back into the... Um... Oh, I'm feeling the heat coming from the mini PC. <laughs> This is a 13700H and it gets warm. Wow. It's not, yeah, it's not too hot, but I'm feeling the fan blowing hot air on me from time to time. And I thought it was coming out of the router. No, the router's fine. It's my, this is, like I said, this is a very high end mini PC. The, in the, you know, the higher end they get, the hotter they run. So it's perfectly normal for what it is. I'm just not used to it. I don't use that very often. Now, let's see. Um, let's go back to the router. Oh, this wants an update. Oh, you know what? Let's go ahead and do this update. No, let's, I'll just hit OK. We'll do it later. And it automatically logged me out anyway, so that's so why I didn't want to. OK. Let me close all this and we'll restart. That's the problem. I didn't. If I'd have known I was going to use this mini PC, I would have, uh, I would have updated it last night so we didn't have to sit through this, but that's okay. Let me take another look at the Amazon website here. See if they mention anything about those ports. We got QoS, WPS, dual, ba dual band. Um, hmm. Sometimes here, data transfer. No, that's not what I It's Wi Fi. This is all about Wi Fi. They're really not talking about the LAN speeds here because um, it's not really what it's, it's, it's not a router. It's being advertised. At, well, it's a little confusing because here they say it's a router, and in other areas they say it's an access point. LAN, one port, RJ45-1000, and WAN, one port, 1000. So they're both gigabit. Yeah, and that makes sense to me. I, like I said, I can't imagine what benefit you would have from 2.5 gig. Because you're, they're mostly designed to be primarily used as wireless devices, and that's why there's only one LAN port on them. You'd want a proper router if you needed to plug in a bunch more. Or, you know, you could plug in a switch... Right, but then you're going to have a cable mess. It's much cleaner to just get a router. Use the device that is best for your needs rather than taking something that isn't best for your needs and forcing it to work because that's going to cost you more. It'd be harder to maintain over time. And yeah, it does say it again right here one gigabit per second WAN on LAN. And I'm going to assume, I'm going to assume that Kevin is the same, but we can verify. Um, let's see, Kevin here, and scroll down, I suspect it's going to be the same.
these just came out. It says September 27th. This is fresh stuff, guys. This is when it came out. Amazon didn't have it for at least, at least a few months. Um, so it's interesting. They don't really talk about the land port here. But again, you only have one land port. Now this says 2.5 gig per second on Kevin. Well, now that's interesting. Or are they saying, are they saying it's 2.5 gig wirelessly? That's what I think they're saying here. I don't think they're saying the port is 2.5. I'm saying the Wi-Fi speeds at 6E can go up to 2.5. That's how fast Wi-Fi is now. It's comparable with an actual physical cable. Of course, physical cables will always be more secure and, and more consistent. So yeah, at 5.7 gigabits per second, you can kind of cut that in half to average what your megabytes per second or gigabits per second tra transfer speed will actually be in reality. You usually just cut those numbers in half. Um, Interesting that they mentioned it on the one and not on the other. Oh, this is tri-band. So Bob is a dual band. So 2.4 and 5. And 6E adds that 6 gigahertz. But for 6 gigahertz, you need to have a modern phone or Windows 11. Because 6 gigahertz is banned in some countries. So Windows 10 doesn't have the ability that is required by law to enable 6 gigahertz. So even though, so this tri-band, the 6 gigahertz band may not be useful to many people who are not running Windows 11 or don't have the latest and greatest um, cell phone from the last two years. And I don't know how a cell phone benefits from 6E. <laughs> I don't get that. But... Um, don't expect 6E to work on Windows 10 or Wi-Fi 7. Same problem. Just making sure I'm not overlooking it. Yeah, so you can see you can achieve essentially the same speeds here on 6 gigahertz as you can on 5, but 6 is less crowded. And there's a wider channel variety, so your connection can be a lot more solid, more similar to a wired connection. Supports 8K streaming. All right, well... We did get the answer for Bob. I'm just looking for the answer with Kevin. And since we have Kevin plugged in, I'm sure my computer rebooted a long time ago. So let me go back and try this again. Back over to, back over to the mini PC. Okay, now I can see it. Let's log back in, whatever that was, and put the password back in. That requires my glasses. You don't screw around with these passwords, I'll tell you what. Oh, look at this. The WAN is 2.5 and the LAN is 1 gig. It was right there in front of my face when we first brought this up. Whereas on Bob, the cheaper unit, the WAN and LAN will be 1 gig each. So at least if you do have a high speed internet, a multi gig internet connection, then multiple people at 1 gig can connect and each get their own 1 gig speeds without interfering with one another's. Um, that's why they do that, just in case you didn't know why. It's so that when multiple people are using the internet simultaneously, maybe somebody's streaming, somebody's gaming in a household with a number of people in it, 
then having a, the faster internet connection allows each person using it simultaneously to not be disrupted by the other person or people using it at the same time. Okay, so just to clarify why it's th designed that way. Wow, made me work to answer that question. <laughs> and, you know, like I said, how simple can these things be when I actually made the modest attempt at looking where you should have looked to begin with? The answer was right there on the first page it brings up. I love it. Love it. All right. The Amazon description shows Kevin at 3.6 G. Yeah, I'm not quite sure what the wireless 6E performance numbers are. Kind of surprised when it showed 6 and 6E being the same. I would assume 6E would be a little better. But like I said, I don't use 6E. And I don't even use set. Well, I'll take it back. Since the Wi-Fi 7 cards have come out, the machine in the back office, I upgraded to Wi-Fi 7. And I think I upgraded this to Wi-Fi 7 now when I think about it. But of course, I'm wired in right now. So that doesn't, that's neither here nor there. So two of the machines I've got now are on Wi-Fi 7. Um, and I think the new laptop we're using as the administrative PC is connecting at Wi-Fi 6E. I have to open it up and switch the card out to put a Wi-Fi 7 card in that laptop. They're very inexpensive. They're like 36 bucks. Since I have the Wi-Fi 7 router, why not? It's not a world of difference, but I'm moving big files, big video files all the time. And most of the time, rather than move the files, because everything's on two different networks, I just copy it to a flash drive and walk it over there on the old sneaker net. Depends how lazy I'm feeling, because the Wi-Fi will take longer, but then I can walk away and go do something else. If I copy to a flash drive and copy it off the flash drive to where I want it, I can get to what I'm doing faster. Sometimes I'm doing multiple things at the same time, multitasking. So I'll set that and I don't care if it takes 10 minutes because I'm going to go start laundry or start dinner. Or I'll come back to it long after it's finished. So it depends on my mood. Richard Palmentier wants to know, how do you know if you're connected to uh, Internet Protocol version 6? How do you know it's running IPv6? Just that IP config command will show you. Netfreak says, got to go, folks. Enjoy and all the best. Right on, right on. Barry Klein says, any guess as to how much the licensing costs were for the SpongeBob characters? What a bizarre question. Are you one of those people when you go to somebody's wedding, you look around and go, huh, wonder what they paid for this place. Wonder how much that catering cost. <laughs> Who knows? That's a strange question. But hey, you know, you're certainly welcome to ask. Pretty sure that's all going to be private personal information. I wonder how much money you make per year. You might be like, hey, you know, that's none of your business, right? Uh, I don't know what difference that makes. John Paul Bacon said Amazon shows 2.5 gig speed for Kevin. Again, that's the wireless speed. I think there's a little confusion there. Jim KJ3N said the reason he was asking about the 2.5 gig is if the router can't do 2.5 gig, file transfers from the laptop are bottlenecks at one gig. Well, but they're not if it's wireless, right? So. In theory, if you're connected via wireless with your laptop, I would assume most laptops are connected via Wi-Fi, you're gonna get two and a half gig through the Wi-Fi. But if you're saying, okay, but if I'm getting two and a half gig to the router, but the router's only communicating to my other router at one, that's bottlenecking me. 
Well, in that case, you'd want Kevin. You'd want to pay the extra. If you want extra, you have to pay extra. But the good news is, at least it's available. It's not like they're saying this is it regardless. So if you, if you need that, you can pay the extra for that. And yes, this supports that. But Bob does not, just so we're clear. Also, if you're a power user who cares about stuff like that, I'd recommend you stay away from them. This is really intended for average ordinary folks who aren't tech elites looking for all these technical details and every little minor. There's much higher end um, and obviously much more expensive and far more technical to set up routers available for professionals and enthusiasts. This is not for professionals and enthusiasts. That's not to say enthusiasts and professionals aren't allowed to use them, but that's not who they're aiming these at. They're aiming these at the biggest buyer of routers in the consumer space. And that is not, in the consumer space, the, the professionals buying routers and the enthusiasts buying routers make up less than 10 to 15% of router purchases. The vast amount of routers purchased are just regular individuals who have no technical confidence and they want it to be easy. And, you know, for somebody to, to buy something really simple, but they want it to do really complicated tasks, it, you're sort of missing the point of who this is for. It's, you probably won't be happy with it if you're that demanding. The good news is, though, since everybody's different and has different expectations, some professionals and enthusiasts may be very happy with these. So you could order it from Amazon and you have 30 days to return it if you don't like it. Richard Palman here with a $10 super chat says he's a member for five months, 28 days. That number two is going to turn to a number six soon. Right on. Thank you, Richard. Carrie, is it true Wi-Fi 5 has better range than Wi-Fi 6, but 6 is faster? Yes. Anytime that number goes up, range goes down. But at the same time, you're making an assumption that the airwaves are clear. This is the problem with information online. It's making assumptions and it's using theoreticals that will vary depending on the user. When, you know, they advertise car gas mileage, it always says your mileage may vary because it depends where you live, what the weather's like, how you drive. You live in San Francisco and you're going up a bunch of hills. I mean, that's going to consume a lot more gas. If you're going back and forth on the freeway or stop and go traffic is going to make a big difference. What gas you put in your car, you can get severely different mileage results than what's on the window sticker. So oftentimes when people talk online, you may see the acronym YMMV, and what they're stating, and this is usually like in conversations and forums, what the person writing that message is saying is that this is my experience, your experience may be different. So if you live in an apartment in Chicago, New York, Boston, some crowded city, and these apartments, you know, let's say this apartment building has 30 units in it, you can expect all through the all 30 are going to have their own Wi-Fi. And you better believe they're all bleeding over onto each other and overlapping and they're congesting the space that we're using to transmit the data that we can't see with the human eye. And so Wi-Fi 6 is going to be less likely being used. So let's say you are in a very crowded apartment and you have Wi-Fi 5 and you might find it's better than 2.4, because 2.4, everybody uses. Five, uh, most people are using five now. It's been out long enough. Six is pretty rare. So you'll have this whole area of airspace all to yourself in that crowded apartment with all that congestion. And all of a sudden, everything opens up and the six is going to be better. But at the same time, your range will be diminished because the higher the frequency goes, the shorter the range is, but also the more open, more likely open 
um, you'd be less likely to be affected by congestion. So is it always, it's not always faster. There's a, or is it always, is always the range better? If there's a lot of uh, congestion, it will affect your range on Wi-Fi 5. So it's possible, depending on your environment, that your Wi-Fi 5 range is worse than your Wi-Fi 6. That's entirely possible. But when you look at the numbers and you take out every possible variable and just say, here's an open room with no competing devices, always Wi-Fi 6 range will be lower than Wi-Fi 5, and Wi-Fi 5 range is lower than 2.4. 2.4 gives you the widest range. If you keep getting those numbers lower, you get further range on the lower numbers. That's just the way the, the spectrum works. All right, hope that I try to take things that are complex and I try to find analogies or to simplify them without getting into technical engineering. David Graham with $2 in Super Chat says, good show. Right on. Thank you, David. Michael Dane, hey, he's the man, joins us in the chat. He said he's getting ready to give away his 150th computer within the next few weeks. What a generous man. Michael, I think he's in Ohio, and he gives, he refurbishes and builds and um, gives these computers to people he personally knows in his community that he knows is, you know, it's not a scammer, it's not someone messing around, that helps and uh, improve the quality of life for the folks. Um, so proud to have him here in the community and leading by example. You know, we do that here as much as possible. We do a lot of computer giveaways. I don't know how many we've given away, but certainly well over 100, maybe closer to 200. It's not a competition. But if it were, what a great competition. Whatever happened to the Minis Forum UM790 Pro? I remember there were some driver problems that I think is all solved. I would love to see an update. UM790 Pro. I don't think I had drive. The only thing I remember having driver problems with were the GTR. Oh, oh, so when B Link came out with the GTR7, it had driver issues, right? And I couldn't get the display to work. Is that what you're talking about? And then Minis Forum came out with basically the same chip and chipset as the B Link a couple months later. And I had the same video connection problem. Uh, it works fine now. Yeah, that's all been solved. That was, a, um, that was an issue where the manufacturers of these devices released the product before AMD released the driver. And AMD advised them not to do it, and they did it anyway. Now, if I had plugged either of those devices directly into a monitor the way most people would, it likely would have been fine. But I'm running through a capture card, which in theory, we're going to go back to theory, should be indiscer indiscernibly the same to the connected device, it doesn't know that that's not a monitor. It emulates being a monitor. But something in the drivers on that chipset, it's like 760 or 780M, they just weren't done yet. So, well, most users never had a problem. I have a unique, different situation here, and we obviously did. But yeah, the problem has been resolved. And, you know, I still have the units, obviously. So, they, time permitting, we could bring them out and reevaluate them, but they're, they're not new news anymore, you know? They're still sold and they're still current products, but I try to bring you new stuff. I try to make introductions and you've already been introduced and so many other channels have already covered the reviews. I feel like revisiting that would be pointless unless I had something new to bring to the table that the other reviewers haven't done. But I appreciate the question. You got a good memory. John Paul Bacon provides a link. He says this website shows all the info you may want to know about Wi-Fi or Wi-Fi 16. You can go. Hey, it's Paul O'Brien's birthday. Look at that. Everybody say happy birthday to Paul O'Brien. Paul joins us from Ireland. Slancha. I think that's how you say cheers in Irish. Did I, did I say it right? Don't ever do that again, Carrie. Ah, <laughs> uh, there he is. Two euro contribution. He says, it's my birthday and I'll cry if I want to. I hope it's tears of joy. 
All right, did I miss any questions? I think that's about it for today's show otherwise. Andy Wood Winbridge says it's his birthday too. You guys twins? Happy birthday to Andy Winbridge. Right on. Hope you guys have a great day and thank you for sharing it with us. Charles Eslick said he's going to be 70 years old on the 25th. Well, don't rush to that. Sherry McFarland said that was a great discussion and a great demo and a great chat. Thanks to everyone and thanks, Kerry. Thank you, Sherry. Very nice of you. I appreciate it. How's my hair? Doesn't look good. <sighs> We're so lucky to have uh, such a friendly, thoughtful, kind community here. I can't tell you how much I value this community. And I just appreciate each and every one of you for being a part of it and making it so amazing. I haven't checked my phone, I'll broadcast. Let's check that quick and then, uh, and then we'll say our goodbyes. And the, I'm biding my time. I'm stalling to give you time to put any final questions about the routers. <laughs> uh, Got an email from our friend Frankie B, which I will respond to personally. And let's see here. Uh, I'm stalling. I want to give you guys time. Sometimes I end the broadcast and right as I end it, somebody asks a question and I'm like, darn it, I really wanted to, you know, give people an opportunity to answer their questions for them. And I'm anxious, uh, this giant box that arrived is a 49 inch curb screen Samsung that I told you about earlier it was on sale at eBay. And I'm so paranoid about receiving something like that in the mail. I have this anxiety that the screen is going to be cracked <laughs> and it's massive. So I don't want to have to put it all back in the box and take it back to ship it. It's going to be a pain in the butt. I'm crossing my fingers that everything's okay in the box. Now, the company I bought it from has sold, according to eBay, it shows they've sold over 250 of them. I have to imagine most of them have arrived just fine. Otherwise, you wouldn't be making any money. But still, you never know how your delivery driver might treat it or how some delivery driver in, in, the, in the process of getting it to you handled it or dropped it until you open the box. So... Obviously, I couldn't do that while we're live. So you know what I'm going to do as soon as the stream ends, right? So again, just looking for any questions on point and related to the routers. And I don't see any. So I think that's going to wrap it up. <laughs> Paul O'Brien says, yes, we're twins. <laughs> I'm just thinking like Arnold Schwarzenegger and Danny DeVito twins. Maybe? I don't know. For some reason, that's the, that's the image that went in my mind when he said that. John Williams says, my wife wants a minion for her desk as decoration. Hey, they're cheap enough. Although, honestly, on Amazon, you can buy plushies far less money. These are hard plastic, right? Not exactly huggable. Chris Johnson says, cool router. Thank you for the information about it. Paul Connolly joins us as happy Friday morning from Sydney, Australia. Good day, Paul. Andy Woodbridge said he turned 75 today. Look at you guys. I know a lot of 70, well, not specifically 75 year olds, but I know a lot of people north of 70 who 
refuse to learn any of this. They just have a mental block. They just say, no, I don't understand any of that stuff. And then as I'm getting older, I'm finding people closer to my generation, right? So the people who were 75, 20 years ago, I was seeing a lot of that, a lot of the, the folks of, of 70 or north of 70 just making that statement, I don't understand this stuff. But now 20 years later, people that I'm meeting that are north of 70, um, I'm, I'm meeting more and more that are staying on top of the technology. And I love to see that. And it's just kind of showing how what used to be obscure or puzzling to one generation, you can kind of see, at least from my perspective, as I get calls from clients, I'm starting to see the shift in um, attitude or in understanding where it's not so... The, the attitude I'm saying is more like, you know, I got this. I just need a little help with something versus the attitude before that I saw more often than not in that age range or age group was that this is all above my head and you can't teach it to me. I'll never learn it. I love seeing that. I love to see not the, not the people saying, you know, I'll never under, but love seeing the attitude change of the, as we move to another generation of self-reliance and, and not letting age be an excuse that suddenly you're too old to learn. That's the dumbest thing I've ever heard. That's just a bad attitude is all that is. So uh, I'm happy to see the better attitude. <laughs> so good for you. And that's kind of becoming the commonplace now. I'm routinely meeting people in their 80s that have a very good understanding of technology. And like I said, they just there's just a little something that's a little uh, over their pay grade that they need help with and they call. But it's not like the it's not like it used to be where they were pretty much helpless and it was by choice i assure you richard palmatier says i enjoy all your information and i stay informed on all the new tech and always willing to learn it's attitude the greenia says heck i'm 60 and i'm still lost but having fun but you're interested right i'm talking about people who just refuse to be interested there's just no nope. It's like talking to me about baseball. <laughs> I don't care what the rules are. I don't want to know. It doesn't matter. And thankfully, I don't have to rely on it like people have to rely on technology. Andy Kane said, age is only a number. It doesn't stop me from learning new technology. Yeah, but it's a big number. No, of course not. It's attitude. And, you know, you can meet people with, an attitude, with a bad attitude in any age. It's just all I'm saying is there was, there was a time when the, the, the majority of people I was dealing with of a certain age or older almost always had this almost stubborn, I'm, I'm, I'm not going to learn that kind of attitude. But they didn't say it that way. They made it out like, you know, they're victims. It was a choice. All right, that's going to that's gonna be it for me for today. Uh, thank you guys again for your contributions, your support. Thanks to, of course, our friend Frankie B there and Buster. These guys make a lot of things possible here on the channel. I hope you guys appreciate their community contribution, and I certainly do. And, of course, thanks to all the members and all of, uh, whether you're blue or green or white in the chat room, it doesn't matter. You're supporters as far as I'm concerned because you participate you engage with each other and myself and you get what i'm doing a lot of people don't get what i'm doing they they want commercials they if they don't get a commercial they're really upset at me you should have made this three minutes long and got to the point and did your research this isn't an advertisement if you it's weird people want to punish me for not making a commercial <laughs> it's the weirdest thing so anyway you guys get it and those people i don't miss them good riddance this isn't for them. My channel isn't for everybody. And, uh, and I never thought my channel would even get this big to begin with. I just make the content I would want to see in the way that I want to see it. And hopefully I would find like-minded kindred spirits, you know, and uh, more so than I ever imagined. So I can't thank you enough for that. It makes me very lucky. 
And of course, thank you to uh, Mara for the great work she did on today's thumbnail and the video notes. You notice she's putting a little QR code on the thumbnail now. And that way you don't have to look at the video notes. Like if you're watching on a television, you can point your, your cell phone camera right at the QR code. And if you have a relatively modern smartphone, a little, if you hold it just for a second, your phone will see that that's a QR code and a little pop-up will appear right below. It says click here to open whatever website that QR code takes you to. So that way, it's another way to open links without necessarily using a mouse or needing a computer. Like if you had a Fire TV that you watch these videos on or some, you know, you're watching these videos on a television. Well, your television has browsing capabilities if you can watch YouTube on it. But to get the QR code, you would have to use a modern cell phone. And then you can direct them, the cell phone to open that page on your television if you wanted to, or just look at it on your phone. Technology's great, ain't it? If we learned how to use it all, that's usually where the, <laughs> where the issue lies, is learning all these new little tips and tricks that aren't so new. That's okay. We're all part of that in some way. These items I will mention, I forgot. I purchased these with channel funds. Your contributions right here. So um, not quite sure what I'm going to do with them yet. They could go back to Amazon within the 30 day period. I'd feel a little guilty about that if I do it. On the other hand, we've got about $250 in routers here that I could use to get something else. <sighs> Amazon allows it, but I don't want to abuse it. But I don't want to even pay more to ship them away. Or they could go on a shelf and we could maybe have a project in the future where we reuse them. Anyway, we'll see what happens. But listen, thank you guys so much for being a part, as I mentioned. And uh, yeah, David says I could send them back, give them to the family. Uh, yeah, yeah, there's a lot of, a lot of options there. But um, the channel funds, you know, it's, it's, it's a bit struggling, you know, and I could certainly... Um, use that to get something else for more content. I don't think it's evil. It just doesn't feel right to me. So kind of fighting with myself about it. I haven't made up my mind yet. If Amazon does something to upset me, that'll change everything. But Amazon's been great. All right, I'm rambling. So we're going to go. Thank you so much for watching again. Um, thanks to our friends at Acronis, Roboform. Acronis is backup software. Roboform is password management software. I'll tell you what, if you're not using password management software, your life is going to change the minute you start using it. Thanks again to Instant House Call. And of course, don't pay too much for your Windows and Office licenses. You can save more than 90% off the manufacturer's suggested retail price. They're legitimate, guaranteed. They are going to activate. And if you have any issues at all with any of these companies, they have awesome customer service. And unlike any YouTuber I've ever seen, if customer service doesn't solve your problem, you reach out to me personally. The channel email is in the about section of YouTube and we're going to, we're going to make it right. Buck stops with me and I wouldn't endorse something I wouldn't use myself or recommend to my customers. And if my customers had a problem with something I recommended, I'd be held accountable. Something most YouTube content creators refuse to accept any accountability. I'm the only one I know that does it. So you have peace of mind. There's no way you're going to get ripped off. All right. That's going to wrap it up for me. I will see you all again tomorrow. We've got a build going on tomorrow. And I don't know. Maybe Mitch will be joining us. Let's see. I haven't even decided what I'm building. I've got five different builds to choose from here. Just laying around in parts. And I kind of want to get my hands on that MSI Godlike board. Got the parts just the high end 14900K, Gen 5, NVMe. Kind of leaning on that, but I'm going to chew on it a little bit and we'll see what happens. That's it. I will see you hopefully tomorrow, same time, same place. We always broadcast starting at 12 p.m. Pacific time, 3 p.m. Eastern. Bye for now.